Hey Flower Tribe, it's Kelly Lehman from Cranberry Fields Flower Farm and I want to take you on a super quick garden tour of part of my secret garden before this torrential downpour comes in. There's uh, a lot of thunder in the background, but before it starts to rain, I want to show you some real quick things that's going on in part of my secret garden. So here it is July in my Cranberry Fields, New Jersey garden, and this is what it looks like in the very back layer. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Kelly Lehman. I'm the owner of Cranberry Fields Flower Farm here in Cranberry, New Jersey. And I love giving you guys fun, free flower tips. So please feel free to subscribe to this YouTube channel and hit the bell notification so you know whenever I post another fun, free flower tip video. So a lot of Flower Tribe members have asked me to suggest flowering trees for them. And I have to say, I love crepe myrtle. That's the pink tree that you see in the back. I mean, how beautiful is that plant? It's got to be about... Um, I don't know, like 20 feet tall. And those blooms are around for like weeks and weeks and weeks. So the beautiful pink flowers, I'm gonna try to zoom in a little bit. Try to go slow so you don't get nauseous. Oh, you hear that thunder? I hope I don't get struck by lightning like in the middle of this video because that, that would probably really <laughs> be something, right? The flower farmer that got hit by lightning. So this is what those beautiful blooms look like. They don't have a great vase life, but that's okay because they look stunning in landscaping. So if you're looking for a great landscaping plant for the front of your house or the back of your house, this is a terrific plant to have and it's super easy to grow. I have a whole bunch of them. I love crepe myrtle too. Hey Hugh, I love you. You're so you're you're so loyal. Whenever I am going live, I see Hugh pop up and, and you always give me a sound check. So how's the sound out here guys? Besides the thunder, I hope you could all see. And I also hope the picture's clear because the Wi-Fi is not so great out here all the time. So I'm hoping that you guys can see everything clear and that you can hear me pretty good. So let me tell you who else is back here. So I've got some endless summer that are coming up and these guys are super blue and um, if you have more uh, wonderful sound oh thanks guys oh thank you so much for letting me know that you guys are signing in I love to see when you guys are showing up I also love to know where you're from so if you can let me know like in a general area like where are you from uh, in the world like you know maybe give me a state or give me a country because that's so fun for me to see later on and nope you're not late for streaming I'm actually giving you guys a lot of uh, live videos this week because I have so many things blooming and I normally only go live at 10 30 every Thursday and I am going to go live tomorrow 10 30 uh, to give you guys more hydrangea propagating tips but I wanted to give you guys some added bonus footage this week because I just I come out here and I'm like I got to show the flower tribe what's going on so here's the story so this is the endless summer and my soil back here is more acidic which is why these endless summer are so beautiful and so blue and I made a video showing you guys how to alter the color of your hydrangeas and that's in I have a playlist linked in descriptions below with about 18 uh, hydrangea care tip videos and that's one of them so um, if you want to, your hydrangeas to be a little more blue and they're already like you know blue or pink you can add some coffee grounds to the soil and sometimes that'll make the pH turn uh, a little more like acidic and then if you want them more pink you want your soil to be a little more alkaline and you might add things like uh, eggshells so that's just like little quick tips there but let me get back to this garden tour I, I have a tendency to go off on different flower tip tangents so next to these endless summer I've got um, this is called snowball viburnum and this green bush was packed with white snowball type flowers. They almost looked like white Annabelle hydrangeas back in springtime. And so that was like the first, uh, like, you know, like shrub to bloom in spring, but now it's this beautiful green. So if you're looking for an early bloomer, uh, you can look for those snowball viburnum, and this is what they look like in July. So I like a continual burst of flowers in my garden. So once those white snowballs kind of faded away, the endless summer took over. And then uh, to the side, over here I've got uh, another white hydrangea I, I, yeah, I don't want to go too close to it because I'm afraid I'm gonna lose the Wi-Fi but I think it's a pinky winky does anyone know for sure if that's pinky winky it's gonna start to turn red pretty soon hey Cheryl from Florida hey Kim it looks and sounds great oh thank you thank you thanks from North Alabama you checking in from North Alabama love it what's the temperature like by you guys all wherever you are I know Alabama is probably smoking hot we're super smoking hot here it was so so hot today I think it was like 85 90 so anyway those are um, some of the pinky winkies and then I've got uh, a weeping cherry in the back that was beautiful uh, like pink blooms just uh, a few months ago so that's another beautiful flowering tree that you might like 
And, oh, it looks like a pinky winky. Thanks, guys. <laughs> okay. Over here, I've got Princess Spirea that has really beautiful blooms. This is another great um, landscaping plant. It's out. It's like kind of spent right now. It's kind of going to seed, but this plant was packed with these blooms earlier. So they're like this really delicate purpley pink. And I think this one was called like, oh, here's that thunder. This one was called like Neon Flash. So just imagine all these kind of spent blooms right now being that bright, bright purpley pink. And here is uh, one of my limelight hydrangeas. These guys are gonna be packed with giant, like 12 inch blooms in just like another, I'd say maybe like another two weeks. And I'll show you what they look like. But I love limelight hydrangea. If you're looking for a hydrangea that loves to grow in full sun, and needs very little care and will probably bloom for you year after year. It's endless, uh, I'm sorry, it's limelight hydrangea. And I've got tons of limelight all over the place and a ton of videos all about them. Uh, okay, so let's see what's going on back here more. I've got some Joe pie weed in the back and these guys uh, are really fun to plant in your garden, but they can take over. They get these really pretty like maroon heads and but they will take over. But I love when a plant that's pretty takes over instead of the weeds. So I've got a ton of black-eyed Susans in my front garden that basically just kept reseeding themselves, but I love that because now I don't have to weed all those places where they kind of took over. And the same thing with mint. I've got a ton of mint that just keeps self-seeding itself and then it cuts back on my weeds. But just keep in mind that those plants can take over a garden. You kind of keep, you got to keep your eye on them. And then in back of this endless summer, I've got another limelight hydrangea and I just love the stacking effect. So like these guys, I try to think of how tall my plants are going to get before I plant them. So I've got my uh, endless summer in the front and then you've got, you know, some of those snowball viburnum in back of them. This limelight hydrangea is going to get super tall. It's going to be taller than this snowball viburnum. And then these crepe myrtles are just like this giant wall of pink in the back. It's like having a wall of flowers back here. So it's really spectacular when people come out to the garden. And I've got like, so this garden bed here, I'm trying to walk slowly back here. I'm afraid I'm going to trip over Lucy if she's in back of me. So this garden bed is like my furthest back garden. And then I've got a whole bunch of other garden beds. And, but this one in the back is my tallest. So when I planned out my garden, when I did my garden planning, I made sure that I put the tallest plants in the back back so that they're like a backdrop for the rest of the, of the garden. And then this is kind of like what some of these other garden beds look like. I don't want to walk around too much because then I start losing that Wi-Fi, but I'll give you like a little panoramic. You'll see like a, oh, I have to try to catch this though. All right, I'm going for it, guys. There's like a hummingbird moth that I really want to show you. So let me zoom my camera in quick. It's on this butterfly bush. And I just made a pollinators video showing you how to plant a pollinators garden. So I'm going to walk really slow so that my Wi-Fi can keep up with me. And let me see where he went. Oh, you hear the thunders coming in big time now. I hope I see him. I hope I don't lose you guys. Okay, so I'm gonna keep coming in, trying to catch him. What do they say working with like animals and kids? So hard. <laughs> oh, wait, he's coming towards me. Thank you, I take it back. Oh, I take it back, it's a bumblebee. That's my old, oh no, I take it back, it is. It's a hummingbird moth. Let me try to catch him on here better. Where did you go? Here you are. There he is. Is he beautiful? So it's not a hummingbird. It's an actual hummingbird. I think it's called a hummingbird moth. Can anyone confirm that? Somebody on Instagram told me that. And it's basically just sucking the nectar out of these flowers but they've got uh, butterfly bushes now. These gals that I have here are probably about five feet, six feet tall. Some of them I have in the front of my garden are like 10, 12 feet tall, but proven winners just sent, oh, there's another one, holy smokes. I take it back what I said about working with kids and animals. They're, they're a delight, <laughs> an absolute delight. So there's another one up there. So Proven Winners has a few dwarf varieties of butterfly bushes. So if you're looking to do a pollinator's garden, but you, you know, you're thinking like you might not have the space or it's just gonna get overgrown, they've got a few dwarf varieties. One of them is called Miss Molly, and we're getting them in the ground this week. I'll let you know what those look like. So check out, it's called Proven Winners Color Choice, and they're a really cool butterfly bush to have. I can't believe that this, 
this hummingbird moth is sticking around for this filming so much. I figured once I started talking to it, it would like split. And then this other guy over here is like, what about me? So here's my second guy. How about that? Is that crazy to watch? Oh, I'm so excited. And I think it cooled off like 10 degrees just now when this thunderstorm came in. Hey, Perry from Birmingham, Alabama. We're just taking a stroll through one of my secret gardens and we're looking at some hummingbird moths now. And let me show you, I'm so glad that we were able to, to, to come back here without me losing you guys. So down here, I've got knockout roses. I love knockout roses because they'll bloom continually. And uh, I like to deadhead them though. And then I've got some hellebores. And these are the most spectacular flowers in March. Is that crazy? I don't know if you guys know about them, but they're called hellebores and they bloom like crazy. They're the most spectacular, colorful flowers and um, they come in even before the daffodils. So if you're looking for some color pop in your garden, uh, check out hellebores. You can Google it, the images and get them in your garden. Here's a good tip too. If you can find them now, pop them in your garden in fall. I think sometimes they're hard to find this time of year, but they're gonna look really beat up if you buy them uh, in, you know, like your garden centers. They're probably gonna look like this and they're probably gonna be like 50% off or 60% off because they look really crappy. Buy them because they come back year after year. That's what I love about perennials. And I made a whole online course for you guys talking about um, a perennial cutting garden and how to plant it, you know, how to grow them, how to harvest the flowers and how to arrange them. And that's coming out August 5th. So if you want to grab information on that, I'm going to start posting information about that on my um, mail channel, on my email channel. So you can take a look at the PDF free file I have for you in descriptions below. And if you get on that mailing list, it'll let you know when that online course is coming out. And then I'm going to pivot around. I've got uh, in the back here, those are all limelight hydrangeas that I planted in fall with Sheldon. And in back of those are a whole bunch of spirea that we planted. So we planted a whole wall of flowers. These guys were not doing great in my garden. Uh, they weren't in enough sun and they were almost dead just about two months ago. And we replanted them in full sun and now they're doing amazing. So sometimes in spring or summer, it's okay to kind of move some of your plants around. I kind of move my plants around like I move furniture around. Uh, but only in early spring or uh, fall, like late fall, when everybody's kind of dormant and they're not, they don't have any new growth on them. So um, I am really pushing my luck now because I'm looking at all these trees around me like going bananas. So I think that the th thunderstorm is really blowing in. But as I'm walking towards the house, I'll see how long I can keep you guys before the internet, yeah, you know, the internet connection doesn't keep up with me. I'm going to walk really slow and I'll try to keep giving you some more views of the garden. Uh, here's petunias. And the one thing I notice about the petunias is if we don't keep up with the watering, we're like, oh, you hear that thunder? We're like dead in the water. So you really have to keep up with the watering of your petunias. Does anybody have a good like watering trick for the pots? I know sometimes there's like automatic, um, you know, like watering systems for pots. I have to look into those, but any other watering tricks I would love. And this is... I'm walking faster now because I haven't seen any lightning, but I'm sure it's going to come soon. And once I see lightning, that's it, I run. These are just some shrub roses. And this is my second or third uh, burst of color already. I keep deadheading these guys as they start to fade. I give them like a really good deadhead. I'll just like this guy, I would just like snip him right off. And I would go down to like a fresh set of leaves and then boom, they come back just a couple weeks later. So I'm hoping to have these guys blooming all the way through that frost also. And then here's a whole bunch of grasses that we have. Grasses are a terrific element to put in your garden. They add a lot of like romance, a lot of like just sweeping, especially in the wind. And you can uh, divide these in fall. So when these guys start taking over your garden, you can kind of divide them in fall and you can move them around your property or give them to friends. Oh, thanks for checking in from Central California. And all right, oh, I'm so glad that I can take you guys a little bit further here without losing you. So there's that Rose of Sharon in the back. I've got more limelights there. Oh, and I want to, well, I want to show you Lucy first because I know everybody. Hey, Lucy, it's the Flower Tribe. Say hi. Chop, chop. So here's Lucy. Come on, we got to get you in the house. But as we're walking over there, it's 100 degrees in California. Wow. All right, this is my Annabelle hydrangea as I'm creeping closer to the house. I'm going to do a close-up over here. I love these guys. This is the time 
of bloom to cut these Annabelles when they're in this deep green stage because they're semi-dried out and you can get a dried flower arrangement out of them. You guys know that I love them. And then you can spray them with those fun floral spray paints that I show you guys all the time. But this is how big these blooms are. I mean, they're like bigger than soccer balls. Look, this is my thumb and this is the bloom. It's 80 in Missouri. Wow, it's hot in Missouri. Love it. Love when you guys give me the weather reports. So this is what the, the front of the secret garden looks like. Oh, the Cali beaches are 60 degrees. Interesting. And then I'm gonna walk slowly backwards. Come on, Luce, that rain's coming fast. Oh, I might be able to get all the way to the house. I can't believe that I can show you guys all this. So my um, Annabelle hydrangea, you could tell how like leggy these guys are, but they did really well. This is what the hedge looks like as I step back. It's still like this beautiful, beautiful row. Here she is. And this is what it looks like, that big row. And I put these plants in probably about, I don't know, like I think 15 years ago, and they've self-propagated all by themselves. But I'm gonna give you some great propagation tips tomorrow for hydrangeas at 10.30 a.m. on this channel. And I gave some, uh, some propagating tips last week, but I've got even more because the Flower Tribe is awesome. And they gave me more tips to share with you guys. So I love when you guys show up on my Kelly Lehman's Flower Tribe Facebook group. There's a link to that below. And there's gardeners from all over the world that are showing up there and offering tips and answering each other's questions. And somebody there, I think, told me that you can use honey as a rooting hormone. So a lot of times, you know, you'll go to the store, you'll, you, you want to propagate some of your, your plants and you'll buy a rooting hormone hormone. Someone said, just use honey. And someone else said to use cinnamon. So that was you know, like another great tip. But I'm going to show you a few ways that you can get loads and loads and loads of extra hydrangea plants from the mother plant. And I'll do that tomorrow at 1030. But this is what the Annabelles look like now. And there's just like a whole shot of the whole garden. So I guess maybe that's that's the, the trick with this going live is to walk. Usually I walk from the house to the garden and then I start losing you guys. But I walked backwards this time. Oh, Anne says Nashville, it's 92. Whew, it's hot by you guys. It is hot, hot, hot. Anybody checking in from overseas right now? Anybody from like a different country or most of you are from the States today? I, I love to see where everybody's from. And I guess that's about it for now, guys. Well, I'm glad that I was able to show you all the stuff before the rain came in. Your plants are drying out from the heat. Oh, I know. My plants are drying out from the heat too. I hate to say it. I think you gotta just keep up for, with the watering. The plants that I can't keep up with on the watering, I try to make sure that I could put them in shade. And I try to put my drought tolerant plants in the sunnier areas of the garden. And that's why like, I move some of my plants like furniture because sometimes I really can't keep up with the watering and I just know that I just need to like yank out some of the ones that are sensitive to that and I need to move them to a shady spot and the other ones I need to, you know, like then I'll just find ones that are more drought tolerant. So sometimes that's just the story. 97 in Utah. That's hot, 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 hot. Okay, and here's the front, my front wall garden that I still am ashamed to show you guys this. This is like the, the walk of shame. I've had this uh, bed empty since like May. We ripped out a ton of azaleas that weren't doing good. They were getting too much sun and I wanted to plant a ton of hydrangeas here and I just haven't got to it. So this is what this uh, wall looks like. So this is one of the, the, the unflattering spots. Uh, but I wanna show you guys the good, the bad and the ugly. So this is the ugly. And then here's some petunia pots that are coming in great. Oh, I want to show you something really cute over here. This is a garden that I planted, an herb garden a while ago with ShopRite uh, herbs. I just got them right in the garden center. I popped them right in this fountain that was broken. We can never get it to work properly. So I think it was actually Sheldon might have had the idea. He said, why don't we put some herbs in there? So I just took some herbs from ShopRite. And I just, you know, they had the, the roots on them already because sometimes you could buy them in like those little bags. And I planted them in here and I've got like thyme and I've got parsley and I've got basil and there's lavender in here and there's sage. And the trick with this is to continue to pinch them. So this new growth over here, anything that's coming up the top, I want to pinch it off because that's going to encourage more blooms to come off from the side. And then it's gonna tell the flower that you need to push out even more leaves now. Because once your plant starts to go to seed, up, oh, I think that happened over here. 
like my time I didn't keep up on. And once the seeds start coming in, then the flower stops giving you uh, leaves, it stops giving you the herbs, and the herbs start to get more bitter tasting once it starts to flower. And then that's it for the plant. It stops you know, pushing out all that new growth. So if you have herbs, you have to keep on giving it that little pinching. I'm gonna do that with the sage too. Once again, you take that new fresh green growth from the middle, snip it off either with the scissor or your fingers, and that's it. Okay, now I'm getting uh, now I'm getting nervous. Come on, <laughs> now I'm gonna head inside. All right, guys, thanks so much for joining me in this video, and I'll see you guys 10:30 uh, Thursday to tell you all about the propagating. Okay, <laughs> I'll talk to you later. I'll see you guys in the next video. Come on, Luz. <laughs> oh, it's pouring out. Come on, hurry up.